Recently, The Guardian released an article titled, Women Don't Need to Bleed, Why Many Women Are Giving Up on Periods. And my first reaction was that the article was potentially quite harmful and I wanted to delve into why that is. Basically, the article outlined how increasing numbers of women are choosing to use methods of contraception such as the combined oral contraceptive pill continuously to completely banish their period and with it all uncomfortable symptoms such as bloating, cramping, mood swings and acne. First off though, we need to understand the true definition of a true period. A true period is a bleed which follows approximately 14 days after ovulation. If you're not ovulating, you're not having a true period and you're having what's known as a withdrawal bleed. So most contraceptives actually work by inhibiting ovulation, which means that if you're on these methods of contraception, you're not even having a true period anyway. And there's actually no good reason for you to have a withdrawal bleed each month. It's simply done because that's the way it's always been done. And yes, there's some evidence that this is perhaps because the original developers of the pill wanted it to seem more natural and more acceptable to the Pope. All that aside, if you're already on hormonal contraception that inhibits ovulation, then you're not experiencing a true period anyway. So sure, go ahead and take those pill packets back to back because the bleed you're experiencing really actually has no benefits for you. However, here's where we come to the good stuff. The article by The Guardian actually completely missed the point by saying that menstruation has no benefits and is a pointless exercise. In fact, there's a quote in there by Dr. Anne Connolly, the clinical lead for women's health for the Royal College of GPs, and Anne says that there's no health benefit to periods. In fact, quote on quote, 99% of women don't need to bleed. Um, okay. And Judith Stevenson, the Margaret Pike Professor of Sexual and Reproductive Health at University College London, even goes so far as to say, in some ways, it seems like one of God's great design faults. It's not helpful to have these periods. In fact, if you don't have them, one of the biggest benefits would be reducing iron deficiency anemia. Wow, let's just take a step back for a second. Both of these medical professionals are completely missing the fact that menstruation is not the main event of the menstrual cycle. Menstruation is simply a flow on effect of ovulation. Ovulation is the true main event of the menstrual cycle. And ovulation has massive health benefits, like massive. I'm not a medical professional, so I do really encourage you to do your own research on this one. But ovulation is the way that we make our own female sex hormones, estrogen and progesterone. So estrogen and progesterone actually have huge benefits for your health. For example, ovulating regularly has benefits for your heart, your bones, your breasts, your mood, your libido, your energy, your insulin response, your thyroid, your skin, your hair, and so much more. For example, ovulation is incredibly important for bone health because during our teens and 20s, it's our only chance to build up a good bone mineral density. If we take contraception that stops us from ovulating during this time, we're missing out on the chance to build up our bone mineral stores for the future. And this can put us at an increased risk of osteoporosis in old age. As another example, progesterone has natural benefits for your mood and low progesterone is actually linked to anxiety and depression. If you're not ovulating, you're not making progesterone and therefore you don't get to enjoy this natural protection for your mental health. As another example, regular ovulation has huge benefits for heart health. And this is one of the reasons why postmenopausal women are at an increased risk of heart disease. There's so much more to say here, but the key takeaway is that ovulation is a natural mechanism of the body and it's got many benefits that go well beyond reproduction. And I'll add to this that the synthetic hormones in the pill are not the same as the natural sex hormones that your body produces when it ovulates. They don't have the same benefits and in many cases the synthetic versions of our natural hormones actually cause some pretty unfortunate side effects instead. Finally, oftentimes when these articles roll out with the idea that women don't need a menstrual bleed, they often use the idea that because in the past women had hardly any periods because we were so busy being pregnant breastfeeding cave women that therefore we don't need any in our modern life. Um, what they fail to mention with this is that pregnancy involves 
massive levels of the hormone progesterone. It absolutely skyrockets in pregnancy and this has huge health benefits. And outside of pregnancy, the only other time you're going to make progesterone is when you ovulate. If you're not ovulating, you're not making progesterone. So if you decide to suppress your menstrual cycle entirely, you're not replicating the conditions of pregnancy, rather you're replicating the hormonal profile of a chemically castrated or postmenopausal woman. In addition to all of this, our menstrual cycles are actually now considered to be a fifth vital sign of our health. By taking hormonal contraception, we completely suppress the messages that our menstrual cycle is trying to communicate. I like to say that it's a bit like seeing the oil light or the check engine light go on in your car and it glares in your eyes a bit when you're driving at night, it's all just a little bit inconvenient. So you tape a piece of paper over the light so that it doesn't bother you anymore. Sounds crazy, right? I know. Well, wait till you hear the next bit. Meanwhile, your oil levels are getting lower and lower and your car is rapidly heading toward a breakdown. The same thing happens when you take the pill to cover up your menstrual cycle issues. It's a band-aid. It's a band-aid, people. It doesn't fix anything. If you've got PCOS or endometriosis or fibroids, they're all still there under the surface and in many cases progressing silently in the background. Where at all possible, it's always preferable to address the root cause of your pesky period problems instead of sweeping them under the rug. After all, they're your fifth vital sign. I think we also need to quickly touch on this quote from the article. Experts also stress that stopping periods won't affect future fertility. Dr. Ann Connolly says when you stop taking the hormones, they get flushed out of your system very quickly and your periods will return to what they were before you started taking the pill. And this quote is actually really problematic. So yes, the synthetic hormones of the pill are very quickly flushed from your system. However, your system itself needs to now kickstart a complex endocrine messaging process that's been suppressed for however many years you've been on the pill. And this doesn't necessarily happen straight away. In fact, one study showed that it took up to nine months before all the participants had regained their menstrual cycles. In addition to this, the pill is known to deplete a number of nutrients that are actually vital to fetal development during the early stages of pregnancy. So you really don't want to fall pregnant immediately after coming off the pill, even if your fertility does return straight away. Basically, I fully support the pill being available to us all. I've personally used it myself in the past and I'm very aware and grateful for the ways in which the pill was central to the feminist movements that allowed us access to education, politics, the workforce, the list goes on. However, I think we need our health practitioners to be a little more honest, a little more honest about the mechanisms by which the pill works and how exactly those mechanisms may affect our health both now and in the future.